39 light years from Earth. In the quiet stretch of sky called Aquarius sits the Trappist-1 system, seven Earth-sized planets orbiting a single, faint red dwarf. For years, it has been one of the most studied star systems in the galaxy, a cosmic anomaly containing a lineup of rocky worlds that seem almost too perfect to be real. And now, the James Webb Space Telescope has completed its first detailed round of observations. Not a confirmation of life, but something quieter and scientifically more revealing. Webb hasn't found what scientists hoped for, but it has found something that changes how we think TRAPPIST-1E behaves, a discovery that sharpens our understanding, narrows the possibilities, and exposes just how mysterious this world remains. When astronomers first announced the TRAPPIST-1 planets in 2017, it sent shockwaves through the scientific community. In a single discovery, researchers found seven rocky worlds, all roughly Earth-sized, all arranged in a compact chain around a faint star. And three of them, including TRAPPIST-1E, were positioned in the star's habitable zone. But TRAPPIST-1 is no gentle sun, it is an ultra-cool red dwarf, a star notorious for violent flares and long periods of high-energy radiation. These stars can strip atmospheres off planets with relentless force. That created the central mystery. Could any of these worlds still possess an atmosphere today? Or were they all carved down to bare, airless stone? TRAPPIST-1E was always the prime candidate for survival, and Webb was built to put that theory to the test. Among the seven planets, TRAPPIST-1E has always held a special place in the lineup. It sits directly in the middle of the habitable zone, occupying the position most likely to balance temperature and stellar energy. Its mass and size align almost perfectly with Earth's, placing it squarely in the category of true terrestrial planets. Its density suggests a metal-rich core and a rocky mantle, indicating a familiar internal structure rather than the inflated or volatile-rich composition seen in many Neptunes. And unlike some of its more extreme siblings, TRAPPIST-1E shows no sign of being volcanically bloated or chemically exotic. If any world in the TRAPPIST-1E system once had oceans, clouds, or a stable climate, it would almost certainly be this one. But speculation means nothing without data, and Webb was finally ready to deliver it. To learn whether TRAPPIST-1E has an atmosphere, Webb watched the planet as it passed directly in front of its star. During this alignment, a tiny fraction of starlight filters through whatever surrounds the planet. If that boundary layer contains gases, molecules imprint subtle fingerprints onto the starlight. If the planet is airless, the spectrum remains flat and featureless. When the first spectra from Webb arrived, the result was neither spectacular nor empty. Instead, it revealed a quiet but important truth. There was no sign of a thick hydrogen-rich atmosphere, the earliest kind to detect. And there was no trace of a Venus-like superatmosphere loaded with carbon dioxide, something that would have left dramatic, unmistakable features. In other words, Webb showed that TRAPPIST-1E is not a mini-Neptune, not a smothered greenhouse world, and not a planet wrapped in primordial gases. It is definitely rocky, but beyond that, the mystery deepened. Webb did not detect a clear atmosphere on TRAPPIST-1E. On the surface, this might seem disappointing, but scientifically, it is a crucial discovery. By eliminating hydrogen-rich atmospheres, Webb tells us that the planet no longer retains the light gases that young planets often hold. It also reveals that TRAPPIST-1E does not possess the kind of swollen, extended envelope that characterizes many small exoplanets. And by ruling out a thick, Venus-like blanket of carbon dioxide, Webb removes the possibility that TRAPPIST-1E evolved into a furnace-like greenhouse world. With these options gone, two possibilities remain. TRAPPIST-1E might harbor a thin, compact Earth-like atmosphere that is simply too subtle for the current data to detect in a single pass. Or it might be almost completely airless, stripped by the harsh radiation of its star. Right now, neither outcome can be dismissed, and that's exactly what makes the planet so scientifically compelling.
If TRAPPIST 1E does still possess an atmosphere, then it might have survived billions of years of stellar flares from a hyperactive red dwarf, an accomplishment few models predicted. Its ability to retain air would suggest an unusually robust magnetic field or an unexpected geological system replenishing lost gases. But if it has no atmosphere, that is equally surprising. A barren TRAPPIST-1e would indicate that red dwarf planets, despite being common, may be profoundly inhospitable. It would imply that even planets in perfect habitable zones can be stripped down to silence. Either conclusion reshapes our expectations about life elsewhere, but most stars in our galaxy are red dwarfs. To understand the challenge, consider the behavior of TRAPPIST-1 itself. This star is tiny and cool compared to our Sun, but it is also fierce. Throughout its youth, TRAPPIST-1 unleashed ultraviolet and X-ray radiation at levels far higher than the modern Sun. These outbursts bombard the planet with enough energy to break molecules apart and accelerate atmospheric escape. Even today, the star occasionally erupts with flares powerful enough to affect planetary climates. If TRAPPIST-1e is airless, this violent history explains everything. But if the planet somehow retains a thin, Earth-like atmosphere despite its star's destructive tendencies, then something extraordinary is happening. TRAPPIST-1e almost certainly presents one face toward its star at all times. That means its day side is locked in endless red daylight, while its night side is swallowed in eternal darkness. If the planet has no atmosphere, the temperature contrast between these hemispheres would be extreme, with scorching heat on one side and deep cold on the other. But if even a modest atmosphere remains, it could distribute heat around the planet and soften the extremes. Winds could form, clouds could circulate, and a narrow twilight region the Terminator Zone might offer stable temperatures where water could potentially exist. Webb has not detected such a zone, but nothing in the data rules it out. The possibility remains alive and scientifically plausible. The results delivered by the James Webb Space Telescope tell a clear but incomplete story. The planet does not possess a hydrogen-rich atmosphere, which means it has completely shed the lightweight gases that young planets often retain. It also does not host an extended, inflated atmosphere like those seen on many sub-Neptune worlds, confirming its identity as a compact rocky planet. And the absence of strong carbon dioxide features, it shows that TRAPPIST-1e did not evolve into a Venus-style furnace. At the same time, Webb has not detected the faint signatures of an Earth-like atmosphere. But this absence does not prove such an atmosphere is missing. It simply means it remains below the detection threshold of current observations. Webb also has not determined the planet's day-side temperature with certainty, leaving its climate and surface state unresolved. And while no water vapor has been seen, Earth-level humidity would be far too faint for this early dataset to reveal. The truth is that Webb has closed many doors, but it has not closed all of them. So, could TRAPPIST-1e still be habitable? Surprisingly, yes. Although Webb has not detected an Earth-like atmosphere, such an atmosphere could exist if it is thin enough or compact enough to evade initial measurements. In that case, the planet could support stable temperatures, circulating winds, and potentially even surface water. Another possibility is that TRAPPIST-1e hosts subsurface reservoirs of liquid water, warmed by geological activity rather than sunlight. Even an airless surface wouldn't rule out habitability beneath layers of ice. Models also suggest that a thin carbon dioxide or nitrogen atmosphere could be present, and simply too subtle to detect with current data. The early results do not eliminate these options, they simply show that TRAPPIST-1e is more challenging to read than expected. The implications of TRAPPIST-1e's atmospheric mystery extend far beyond this single system. If TRAPPIST-1e ultimately turns out to be barren, it would suggest that red dwarf stars may be far less friendly to life than once believed. But if TRAPPIST-1e eventually reveals even a fragile atmosphere, then it means life may still emerge around the most common stars in the galaxy, 
Either outcome reshapes our search strategy for decades to come. TRAPPIST-1E stands as a blueprint, a proving ground, a cosmic Rosetta Stone that can help decipher what it truly takes for a rocky world to remain habitable. The first round of web data was only the beginning. In upcoming campaigns, scientists will attempt to measure the heat coming directly from TRAPPIST-1E's day side, which will reveal its temperature and help determine whether an atmosphere is carrying heat around the planet. They will search for finer traces of carbon dioxide, which could indicate the presence of a thin, compact atmosphere. They'll look for ozone signatures, which would require a supply of oxygen and hint at complex atmospheric chemistry. They will hunt for methane, which can arise from geological or biological activity, and they'll study combinations of gases that should not coexist naturally. The kind of chemical disequilibrium that might hint at something active and ongoing on the planet's surface. Any one of these detections would transform TRAPPIST-1E from a scientific puzzle into a revolutionary discovery. Even if TRAPPIST-1E ultimately proves to be airless, this does not doom the entire TRAPPIST-1 system. Some of its neighboring planets, such as TRAPPIST-1F and TRAPPIST-1G, experience gentle stellar radiation and could be better positioned to retain their atmospheres. Habitability in TRAPPIST-1 may not be a single planet story, it could be a multi-world system, with different planets experiencing different revolutionary paths. TRAPPIST-1E is only the first test, and the story is far from over. So far, TRAPPIST-1E has not revealed itself through dramatic atmospheric features or clear chemical fingerprints. Instead, it has spoken through what is missing, a quiet signal that narrows the field and guides us toward the truth. A planet may be barren, or a planet may be hiding a fragile atmosphere just beyond our current reach. Either way, TRAPPIST-1E is teaching us how rocky planets behave around the most common stars in the Milky Way. It's showing us where life might flourish and where it might struggle. The truth is still hiding in the darkness, but the James Webb Space Telescope is only beginning its work. TRAPPIST-1E remains one of the best laboratories we have for understanding whether planets like Earth are rare or everywhere. So, stay curious, like and subscribe. The next discovery might change everything.